Let's make this basic game stats graphic. So I'm gonna open up a new document. We will go with 1080 by 1350 for our dimensions. So generally the layout of these graphics consists of one side with all the stats and the player name and game information. And the other side has a player image. So let's start with our player image and drag in this photo of Jacob Fairfax. And when you're choosing the image, you're gonna wanna pick a picture that ideally has the player's face showing. You also want a clean background. So one thing you can do if the background isn't that clean is you can add some more blur to the background. Like if you wanted this less detailed, what you could do is duplicate this layer by holding Command and hitting J, and then going up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, you can increase this blur of the image. We don't want to go overboard, but just a little bit more, maybe like eight pixels. And then using a mask, we can basically make it so the blur is only affecting this area to the left of this player. So I'm going to put an inverted mask on, a black mask on this blurred layer by holding option and clicking our mask icon there. So now black is hiding this entire layer. So when we take our brush tool and paint on in white, switch your foreground color to white, you can brush just the areas. And I'm gonna take a soft brush here. So you can go up to your brush settings, make sure the hardness is set to zero. You can just click with this white brush on this side of the image and it makes it a little bit cleaner looking. I wanna be careful not to get too close to the player because you will start to see some glow coming in from behind him. So I'm just taking the opposite color here, the black on our mask to again hide this part of the blur. So we're not blurring our player image, we're just blurring the background. And that's just gonna help us create this canvas for our stats. So let's make a new layer on top of this and you could make a solid block if you want to. So if you wanna take like the rectangle tool for example, you could just make a solid color, maybe with some texture, you know, pick any color of your liking and you can lay the stats out that way. You can also just create a gradient on the image. So it's kind of this slow fade to black or another color. So let's go to our gradient tool. G is the shortcut on your keyboard. And if you right click, you can get to the gradient tool like that. Let's make sure it's set to the basic black to transparent. So if you set your foreground color to black, you should see black to transparent as an option. And then on a new layer, let's hold shift and click and drag from this left edge. And if you hold shift, it'll keep this line straight. So this is giving us this gradient effect, which is just gonna allow our white numbers and stats to pop out more on this background. And this is also where I'd add any kind of filter you want on the photo. So if we just want something simple that desaturates it a little bit, since we have this black and white theme, or we will have this black and white theme going, let's add a channel mixer. And we'll just go to the preset black and white with orange filter and bring this opacity down to I don't know, 20%, I think is what I had in the other graphic. You can see before, and after, just fades everything out a little bit more. We can also add a curves layer if we wanna lift up the blacks a little bit and give it this matte photo effect. So we'll leave it like that. So before any photo filters, we have the image like this. We can also take off the blur. This is our original image that we dragged in. Then we added some blur just to this side of the image to kind of set the groundwork for where we'll be putting our stats along with this black gradient fade. So now let's make our stats. Let's make a new layer, T for our text tool, and let's set our foreground color to white. And if you don't know the shortcut, by the way, to reset your colors to the default, if you hit D, that'll just reset it to black and white, and X on your keyboard will switch this between black and white, foreground and background color. So foreground color, white, let's make our text, and we'll start with a big number. I'm gonna put double zero in for all our numbers. If this is like a stat graphic template, you typically wanna use double zero or use like the widest numbers possible that might fit in a given spot. So if you have like, I don't know, completions, if you were doing that, you'd wanna put in like, 
you know, 99 of 99. And then you want to size things so that the largest text fits in. So let's just say this is a graphic for assist, goals, blocks. Probably not going to be above 10 or really anywhere above double digits. So let's say the widest number we can find is the zero in this font, which is typically gonna be the case. I'm gonna pull up my grid here so we can justify everything correctly. So holding command and hitting apostrophe, you can toggle this grid on and off. I have another video on grids, guides, and margins, which is super useful for things like stat graphics, roster graphics, anything we're gonna need to lay out some text evenly spaced. So first I'm gonna set this font size a little bit lower. Let's go to 300, hit the check mark, and let's set it up so we're a two box distance from the edge, that's like our left margin, and then we'll also go two box distance from the top of the design. So now let's duplicate this layer, Command J, drag it down, and now let's make this our first stat label. So let's use assists for this. Assists. And whenever I'm making text smaller, like subtext under some bigger text, I'm always gonna use the 1.6 ratio to pick my font sizes. 1.6 is like approximately the golden ratio and it just works when you're using it for hierarchy in your designs. So in this font size box, I'm gonna type in divided by, so that's slash, and then 1.6, and then hit enter, and that's still too big, so let's go divide by 1.6 again, and maybe another time too. That gives it something closer to what we'd be looking for. Let's space it evenly, so first of all, I'm gonna align it so the top of assist is touching the bottom of the double zeros, and then holding shift, I'm gonna hit the down arrow key once, twice, that feels pretty good, maybe three times. And now let's put in an actual realistic number, like three, just to see how it looks. And I still feel like assist is a little too big, so let's go back to our type tool and again divide this by 1.6, and it's a smaller font size still. So let's again align it up, and then holding shift, bottom arrow, once, twice, three times. Looks pretty good. Eh, maybe twice is better. A little closer to the number. So now this is our first stat. I'm gonna group this together with the number. So assist and three, I'm gonna hold shift, click on both those layers, and then holding shift, click on this folder to group them. We'll call this stat one. And then I'm gonna duplicate stat one. So command J, duplicating this folder. We'll call this stat two. And then with our move tool selected, let's just drag it straight down. And then again, Command J, copy that layer. And this one is stat three. And now we'll move this one down as well. So I'm gonna put this one right about there. And then we want even spacing between all of these. So to do that, you wanna select all of these layers by holding shift and highlighting them all with your folders. And then with the move tool selected, you can distribute vertically, which is this icon up here. And that's just gonna move this middle one into place. So there's an even amount of spacing between the first and the second group and the second and the third. And we can change the wording for these stat categories. So the first one is assists, then we'll go to, whoops, goals. And then we'll go to blocks. Let's say he had a 3-3-3 game in this example. Let's make a new layer for the name of the player we're gonna put at the bottom. So new layer, again, T for my type, and just clicking. Let's bring the font size up so we can see it. And the player's name is Jacob Fairfax. I'm gonna left justify this, and we'll move it into position Again, let's go with this like two boxes from the edge. And we can change this font too. I think in the original graphic I had Termina. So it just allows it to stand out a little bit more from the stat part of the design. And we can size this down a bit more. Maybe we can make this an even size as this stat label. So 45.77. And underneath the player's name, I'm gonna write his team out, Carolina Flyers. We'll get some spacing by opening up our character panel and dragging up the space between lines. 
And then similarly, I'm gonna divide this number by 1.6 to make the Carolina Flyers like a subtitle of the name. And then we'll also get some more contrast by switching this to Demi, let's see. And I'm gonna decrease the spacing a little bit. So that looks good for his name. The other piece of information we're gonna add is the specific game. So to do that and to make it feel different enough than the name, I don't want just like repeated lines of text stacked on top of each other. So let's put the game information in a box. I'm gonna make a new layer, going to my rectangle tool. Let's again start this rectangle at the same margin. And don't worry, I know we're getting close to the bottom, but we will move this all up. And like right there, and now I'm gonna duplicate this text layer and just type out uh, August 26 versus New York. And we can shrink this down a bit too to the same size as the Carolina Flyers. So divided by 1.6. And we can switch this one to Demi again. I feel like is a good kind of subtle boldness. And I'm also gonna change the text color to black so we can see it on this white rectangle. And then let's also drag out the rectangle so we can cover up the full line. So I'm gonna turn off my grid, zoom out a bit. Now I'm gonna group this all together, the name, the block, and the game information into a group we'll call bottom info. And now because we, we started off too low, let's move it up and let's maintain like approximately a two box margin from the bottom. So you'll see with this specific size, it gets cut off at like a half a box. So I'm gonna go up a half a box, full box, and then another half or so. If you want to be more precise, you can add a full guide. If you go up to view, guides, and new guide layout, we can make it a one inch margin on all sides just by switching all these numbers to one. So now we can really line it up and that looks good. But now we're too close, obviously, on this third stat. So let's move the third stat up. And I'm also gonna try to move this one up like about two boxes above the name just to keep everything as evenly spaced as possible. And then again, let's realign these three stats. So highlighting all of those folders, distributing vertically. And now we have a pretty evenly spaced stat graphic. I wanna adjust the spacing a little bit here at the bottom. So let's go into our bottom info and let's just shrink it all down a little bit. And then I'm gonna shrink the name down just to give it some distance from this game. And we can shrink that text down too. So now we're not going with an exact font size ratio, but that's okay. That just feels a little bit cleaner, gives us a little bit more space to work with. The other thing to notice is the proximity of your elements to the subject of the image. So like, see how the player's leg is pretty close to this game label? You can either move the player over a bit to the right, which I think is gonna be the easiest solution, just to give us a little bit more space there, or we could have shrunk down the text Regardless, I'm gonna add a little bit of a bottom gradient to further separate this name and game information from our player photo. So let's make a new layer right by our other gradient. I'm gonna make a new one and let's just drag it up again. We're just going black to transparent, dragging it up from the bottom and I kinda wanna move it down. So let's rasterize this layer and this just allows us to freely move around the gradient and it doesn't have to be so extreme, but like right about there kind of allows the text to sit on the darker part of the image, which is always helpful for readability. So this is a super basic stat graphic. Again, these specific elements can go different places and be arranged differently. You could have the photo on the left, you could have the photo on top with stats on the bottom. You might put the stats again in like a solid box of some kind. Like if you wanted to use the team color to further separate the stats from the background, you can do something like this. And then maybe you do like another box for the name where you have like, I don't know, gray or 
red box for the name and honestly the name can go wherever you want the name doesn't have to be on the same side as the stats so like maybe you have the name on this side stats on this side you can get creative with the layout of this for sure i would just recommend trying to make sure that you're including all the elements that we went over today the stats obviously the player name the game information and just making sure that things are aligned correctly keep in mind your margins and you will have a clean looking graphic <laughs>